Hi, welcome to this quick maths video on the proportionality graphs. In this video, we're going to look at the graphs that represent y is directly proportional to x, y is inversely proportional to x, y is directly proportional to x squared, y is directly proportional to x cubed, and y is directly proportional to the square root of x. So we're going to look at those graphs in this video. Before you watch this video, the rest of it, I highly recommend you watch the videos on direct proportion and inverse proportion on Corbett Maths now. And that'll give you more of an insight as to what direct proportion is and inverse proportion and how we can get rid of the proportionality sign and put in the constant of proportionality and things like that. So let's start off with y is directly proportional to x. And we can replace the proportionality sign with the equals and the constant of proportionality. So we can put in the k. So y equals k times x. And remember k is the constant of proportionality. So it's just a number such as 5, 10, 15, something like that. So you've got y equals a number times x. And if you were to draw that graph, it would go through the origin. And obviously the, the larger the value of k, the steeper the line would be. The smaller it is, the, the less steep it would be. But it would go through the origin and it would go up like so. So if you've got y is proportional to x, the graph that represents it would look something like this. And that makes sense because remember, this means that as x increases, y increases. And as you can see, as x increases, so as we go across to the right, y increases, the graph goes upwards. And that's it. So this graph represents y is directly proportional to x. It's a, a diagonal line going through the origin and upwards. Okay, our next one. So let's have a look at why is it inversely proportional to x. So if you watch the video on inverse proportion, that's where whenever x increases, y decreases. And remember, we can get rid of the proportionality symbol with an equals, and we multiply 1 over x by k, so that would give you k over x, like that. And you may recognize this if you've seen reciprocal graphs before, where you've got a number divided by x. So you've got y equals a number divided by x, so that's called a reciprocal graph, and it would look something like this. So remember that k could equal a number. It's going to be, just say for instance, 20. So you've got y equals 20 divided by x. And let's put in some values of x and let's see what we get. So if x was equal to 1, well 20 divided by 1 is 20. So you get a quite a, a large value for y. Then let's make x slightly bigger. Let's call it 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10, so it's a lot smaller. 20 divided by, just say 5 is 4. 20 divided by 20 is 1. So as you can see, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And as the values increase to very large numbers, for instance 100, you get 20 divided by 100, which is 0.2. So the graph will take this shape. It's the reciprocal graph, so it looks something like this. So this is y is inversely proportional to x. So if you're asked to sketch a graph to represent y is inversely proportional to x, it would look something like this. Okay, so our next one. So let's get rid of our proportionality symbol and let's put equals k times x squared. So if you had y equals k times x squared, well, it would be the x squared graph, so starting at 0, 0, the origin, and it would go upwards, and it would have that sort of right-hand side of the parabola sort of curving upwards, getting steeper and steeper. And it's been multiplied by k. Well, if k is a large number, it would just get steeper. If k is like a null-point number, it would be a bit shallower, but it would have this shape overall. It would start at the origin, and it would be the right-hand side of a parabola, like so. Okay, let's have a look at our next one. So our next one is y is directly proportional to x cubed. And again, let's get rid of the proportionality symbol and put in equals k times x cubed. And if we were to sketch this graph, well, it would be the right-hand side of a cubic graph. So you'd have a start at the origin and it would curve up quite quickly. So as you can see, it's very similar to the x squared one, but it's just a bit steeper. Okay, our next one. So our next one is y is directly proportional to the square root of x. So that's going to be y equals k times the square root of x. And the square root graph would look something like this. The square root of 0 is 0, times by k is 0. So it would start at the origin, and then it would take the shape, the same shape as the square root graph. And that's it. So let's have a quick recap. So we've got y is directly proportional to x. So it starts at the origin and goes up diagonally, like so. Y is inversely proportional to x. So you've got the graph, obviously, as x gets bigger, y gets smaller. And it's the same shape as the reciprocal graph. So it looks something like this. You've got y is proportional to x squared. So it's the right-hand side of the parabola. So starting at the origin and curving upwards. Um, you could obviously also draw y is proportional to x cubed. But it would be the same but steeper. And then you've got y is proportional to the square root of x. It starts at the origin. You've got your square root of x graph shape. And that's it.